early picks. So a pick like a Garrosh, a Nubrog, ETC. These picks can lead to a snowball game. Maiev as well, one of those heroes that can be very powerful here because she looks to help set up those kills, set up those picks. Um, people in Korea have gotten so good at dealing with Maiev though that she's not necessarily going to be in the ban cards for that reason. More likely it would just be to again limit the hero pools of SC and SDE. Uh, I mean, all I'm trying to say is SDE looks so good uh, in, in game one. So there's definitely merit there, but I, I think for Ballistics, they have to find an answer. How do they deal with Gen G being willing to just so heavily target SC uh, that it corrupts the, the effectiveness of their draft? I think you just have to, even if you're going to continue to do this Phoenix ban, you've got to draft your DPS is higher. You have to prioritize them above other, perhaps maybe better meta heroes. And this, the trend continues. We may see a Maiev ban, followed up by, uh, you know, Raynor. Could be the other order, but it doesn't matter if both DPSs are banned and Ballistics goes first pick Malfurion, for example, then they're gonna have similar issues in this draft that they did in the previous draft. So what's it gonna be? Maya, and I think this just opens the door for the Rainer ban or the Hanzo ban. Both are acceptable. You would not normally put Hanzo in the slot, but against SC, it's certainly a possibility. So what do they pick first? Do they grab the DPS they need? Do they understand why they were choked out? No, they go for the Malfurion, and I start to worry again that they don't know what even went wrong. Oh, the Tracer, Tracer take it away. Task Tracer. Yeah, Tracedar. It's there for Gen G. Not a stranger by any means, but it does further limit Ballistic's hero pool. And I mean, maybe they do grab the Hanzo right here, right? Yeah, I mean, Hanzo's good against Tracer. Tougher to execute against double support Tracer, but still good against Tracer. Solid wave clear. Could even look for potentially the Anubarak with it, so they do get the Hanzo. Yeah, so there it is. SC gets to play one of his heroes. Does it suit the map? Does it suit the comp? You know, it's predictable, I think, in a lot of ways. Is I think that's kind of why Sake is laughing here. I mean, anyone could predict that this was going to be what he picks up here. Yeah, I mean, the Blaze works perfectly against Tracer. Uh, Bunker's super good for that. Uh, but at the same time, how much are Ballistics playing into Genji's hands? Well, the ETC ban is to limit the potential for early game picks. And also, ETC is kind of a soft counter against Tracer because she tries to get in there find those kills. The Karazim ban, I think, is just a must ban against Sake at this point. It's going to be the Rhaegar, extra wave clear. And the Ancestral healing, to boot it all up, plus a good uh, cleanse against the stuns that can come out from Blaze, the roots that can come out from Alphurion. Now, are they going to go for, or is Ballistics going to go for that uh, Anubarak that we've seen so common uh, along with Blaze? Uh, I think it would make a lot of sense. Hooligan has played it before. I would say that after watching his Diablo in game one, I i mean, why would he play anything else? It just looks that good. But obviously, it's a very different situation here on Tomb. I think that both heroes are good for him right now. Um, Johanna is also great against Tracer, and it's good for wave clear. But it's going to be the Garrosh, actually, one of the ones we didn't really mention. We talked about earlier when we talked about the map pick, but we didn't uh, really mention it in this particular draft as very powerful against a strong front laner like Muradin, but it, it's better against something that's diving in, like an Anubarak, like an ETC, and you're almost never going to be able to grab a Tracer with this. You might be able to hit the Groundbreaker and then follow that up into something, but that's a tough ask against Rich's Tracer. The Nara, great for wave clear, works well on this map with the slows you're going to have, the roots, etc. Um, as Lyric does come in as the final pick here for Kyocha. I think both drafts are really good. They both have excellent wave clear. And Jung'a on the Blaze, I think if I look at all these 10 heroes, the one I look at and say like, that's the pick, it's the Blaze pick. It, you have the bunker, you have solid sustain, wave clear, um, stun potential. It's very terrifying to look at what that pick can accomplish against what Genji has brought to the table. They again attempt the Hero pool choke for SC, but he gets the Hanzo early. Let's find out if Hanzo wins against Tracer this time. And historically for these two teams and for the highest level of HGC Korea, Hanzo does not only win out, but we're, we've seen both Hanzo and Tracer nerfs since that time, since that meta. I mean, this is where we get to reevaluate, right? The relative strength of the teams, their heroes, compositions. 
It's all on the line here as uh, you know, we enter game number three of our final game, our final series, rather, of uh, part one, phase two. So this is a nice sort of period to put at the end of this sentence before uh, the uh, Eastern Clash happens. Yeah. I would completely agree with that. Oh. And I mean, how much, like, you got to know every single Chinese player and team as their eyes just drilled on this match. So much to learn before facing off against the top team. Certainly. Top Even more than, like, a period, I feel like it's like an epilogue. It's like something that, like, makes you wonder, is there a sequel? You know, it's the cliffhanger before the Eastern Clash. Then like, uh, further into, like, qualification with this con part Like two. an ellipsis. Yeah, it's an ellipsis. Yeah, it's three periods. All Many set. periods in fact. So, uh, going forward, double knockup there from Hooligan. So he's shown that he has the potential to land that on the mobile back line, but Look will at that, that be there did in the you, fight? Did you just notice, uh, I'm sure you just noticed it rapid, but I don't know if Twitch chat noticed the block there for Rich onto the arrow. Because Sake was low, um, and then was hit, not Sake, sorry, my bad. Uh, reset was went low, was hit by the Sonic arrow, which is so hard to hit. He was very low. And Rich didn't want him to have to shield himself. He wanted to, to get the shield himself, but uh, he blocked the arrow, Rich did, just to, because he was worried for his teammate. That's Aww. dedication. Good guy. Ballistics Rich. does control gem uh, numbers right now with about a six lead. Yeah, better wave clear, they've been rotating better with this. Better wave clear is strong because, you know, reset and of course Kyocha on the Tastar and the the Orc are gonna have insane wave clear, but it's like they have Lunar man. Uh, reset, uh, hello. Wow, that's dangerous. The reason why Lunara is picked more than anything else, even more than her wave clear, is as Rich barely survives here. Jonga kind of two v oneing there and actually going in. Okay, I thought he was gonna go a little bit deeper there, but tenuous. Yeah. Top lane. But the reason why Lunara is picked is because it counters uh, the Tassler shields. Burns through, damage over time works well, and does not dissipate. It's permanent unless it's out healed. Damage over time will last longer than the shield, which is only temporary. The shield is great against burst damage. Something like, you know, a Hanzo Scatter Arrow or a Leaming Orb, but against Lunara's slow sustained damage and Hanzo's auto attack damage it doesn't work as well. Certainly does not pay attention to uh, maybe a little bit of the macro game with the camp timing coming up. Should see that one finished off momentarily. And, uh, you know, it's not being equaled on the other side. So this will give Ballistics at least a tiny bit of an advantage. I mean, it's not going to be, I guess, the biggest deal that we'll be reacting to now. Yeah, this map also is one of those maps that in like 2016 and the early parts of 2017 was very much a long map like it didn't snowball very well but teams have figured out how to play this map better since then but if lunara can live for a long time she becomes so powerful because of her uh, level four talent which will give her the ability to do so much extra damage this to structures. Is waiting looking for an opportunity to come in but i mean if ballistics rotate down quickly Jonga's enough caught. maybe uh, yeah, Jonga actually could be in a little bit of trouble. Rich coming down, Pulse Bomb is out. Jonga, surviving. Parting Gift not quite gonna connect there, but it would've been fine either way. Power Mania helping him out. Does uh, escape alive. So uh, either way, that is breaking down the wall of the mid lane. So that's uh, super, super helpful. And now both teams still looking for uh, the ability to turn in as they just press that 50 gem mark. Yep, but Genji has wave clear advantage right now. They also, they're not wave clear, but like uh, minion wave advantage, and they have uh, the positional advantage here. Rich and Sake will get the turns in. One more turn in from Kyocha will secure the web weavers here. If Jungle wants to contest, he may pay for it with his life. Just, just toss in the flames. One second, SC tosses out the scatter. They're gonna walk away. But all during this time, you have to think about trade off Sake. Gets a full seven minion wave of extra experience. Dance along with it. Just kind of continuing like the trend of who controls the waves, controls the vision, and then also controls the turn ins. Starting to get a little bit close. Ballistics have not been able to turn in at all. Just Lunara. jumping forward. There's the combo. Pulse bombs out. So is Lunara down, dead. Sake the next to fall. 
will equalize it at one apiece. But, but it's a, a trade in. that gets a turn in, yeah. Yeah, coming in, that's the win for Genji. Kyocha just gonna steal some life here of Kyocha, or excuse me, of Chung'a as he heads in here. The Web Weaver turn in, gonna be prepped on all three lanes for you know a decent push towards the first three walls. As you can already see, top walls, gates, damaged mid, damaged slightly as well as bottom. So this could put some serious damage on the ports. Here's the bottom wall I was talking about. Jonas caught. And they're focusing on top. They're gonna rotate top to mid while Jonga pushes bottom hard. He can't really do much as the defender here in the bot lane in the solo matchup. Yeah, I, especially I think the, the bigger vulnerability is that, I mean, there are like maybe three members of Ballistics that have like 30, 40 gems on them. Like, it's just a really high, 20 or 30 gems on them. Uh, very, very high numbers. So you really got to be careful. Stay alive, push, so that you can get the counter turn and try to make a little bit of this deficit back. Yeah, that's really what this is all about. You have to carefully defend, but make sure you don't overextend. 30 gems carried by SC is yeah. insane, you know? I mean, he's got good wave clear on the squad. That's why he's carrying so many Jung'a as well, staying in the soul lane. They're gonna pick up a lot of gems that way. Genji damages mid down to half and gets the top and bottom walls. The addition of, of course, the mid wall, but the, the key here is they get a little bit of an experience lead, about, you know, maybe one fifth of a level lead here. Not even, like maybe like more like one eighth. But they're still closer to 10, and they've done that damage. The next Web Weaver push that they get, which they are almost ready for, will kill all three ports, and will start to damage the keep wall. So the keep for Ballistics is just to make sure they prevent the double. Reset, it's gonna use Dimensional Shift early. No does, 10 on either side. Does get out of there, a lot of free damage there onto Jung'a and Hooligan to the front line, weak for Ballistics. Can they follow it up with more damage? There's the Jet Propulsion in onto Tisp. Kyocha is low off to the side. Can SC follow up with the kill? He's gonna be charging it up, Tisp with the block. Shield Got coming shield, through, but he's, but he's dead. dead. Jinx, you can buy me a soda after. I, I will do that. <laughs> or perhaps a, uh, a uh, an alternative beverage. Sure. Sounds good, you can get that. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out afterwards, but here comes the turn in. The counter for Ballistics is good. They held on through the previous Web Weaver push. Get well, a big turn in. This is uh, gonna be, you know, 10 for both. Let's see if Ballistics can do further more structural damage than what Genji did. Can they use their turn ins, or rather their uh, heroics here to get more damage? Done. Bloodlust is actually what's locked in here for Sake with this double support. So okay. more damage for Rich. It's going to be crazy how quickly he's able to empty those clips, but also a little bit more movement speed. Boggy's the target here. Does not have Ice Block yet, but he's going to be able to heal through this easily. There's no follow-up damage. Yeah, that's this a is caught. alternative usage of the Pulse Bomb uh, as an annoyance. Uh, but yeah, wow, that's a big pick to have during this Web Weaver push. And look at that toss. Reset in a rough spot. He's gonna have to go into Archon. We'll see how well that works out. There's the pulse bomb we're looking for. Boom goes the dynamite. That is Magi out of there. Coach gonna help clear this bottom, uh, or sorry, mid push. And that's actually gonna be no ports down. So they almost did the exact same amount of damage. If you compare the mid port health, I mean, it's a slight health lead, I guess you could say, Gen G. It's like not even definitive. I don't even know if the say that he has more health is like actually objective at this point. It's pretty hard to tell. I think it's a very slight advantage to Gen G. Hooligan is going to be caught here, eating that side store damage. Should get out. Rich looking for SC though. SC just barely gets over that wall before it's destroyed. But here comes the grab onto Jung'a. He's got no mana. Gets Lo caught here. Is he going to live? Lots of damage from SD being put out all during this fight. So over time, Gen G are being worn down. They can't stay in that fight long enough to find a kill. They are pushed out at uh, just about everyone at half health. So, I mean, the Lunar picks paying off. SDE doing a great job with positioning. Even SC on this Hanzo, finding a lot of poke damage. To gonna be out. another turn in back to back. Yeah. So, Ballistics, this is going to be at least a mid fort down. Could be top or bottom fort falling as well. I don't think it'll be all three. But given the composition, they can push really hard right now, so. Could we just see a game where we trade turn-ins back and forth and both teams are so good that they not only don't die in team fights but defend against successive Web Weaver push? I mean, that's what we're seeing to, to a certain extent, obviously. It's not been perfect on either side, but oh, SD gets SD. caught again. That continues to be a consistent factor here as well. Rich just wants to make sure he doesn't get by Groundbreaker. Coach avoids it as well. It does get rooted, but he should be able to Wraithwalk away in just a moment here. 
Meanwhile, that kill onto Lunara means this push is so much weaker for 20 seconds. She can't be doing that nature's calling level four damage with this. That's part of the reason why she's picked, part of the reason why she's played on this map. And you know, it's not quite like, you know, we have unfair advantage, which would just be very unfair if that were Not, not the case yet. No, definitely not. And so for a while, Genji get a brief reprieve. Uh, they are still going to lose a couple of forts here. So uh, and it's still a win for Ballistic in the end. Certainly true. Genji, though, didn't take as much damage as they that should have, you would argue, without that pick. Ballistics would have done a lot more. But there's holding 72 gems, so the tables have turned. Genji is now the team that's behind in structures, has a massive gem carry. They're still very close in experience because of the soaking tactics that both soul laners have used very well, plus the wave clear being so similar between these two teams. Right now, Ballistics can't turn in, so they don't really have any chips that they can use to kind of make any wagers here, so to speak, in this part of the game. They can only just play defensively. They're not going to be able to make any aggressive moves themselves. It would just be a risk. But Genji, when they start to turn in, the onus is on them. That's when Ballistics is going to strike. That's when they're going to make their move. As you can see, the second they try to channel, that rotation comes through six gems away. Almost any player on Genji could turn that in to make it happen, but they just don't have the vision advantage. They don't have the wave advantage to make it happen. As, as you can see, the rotation to the top, try to deal with that. They don't lose that experience. And SDE, the closer and closer he gets, just trying to get that poke damage, just scares me so badly. If he gets blown up, I mean, we just saw during that last Web Weaver push, it just really neuters a lot of Ballistic's effectiveness. Well, Lunara is coded in such a way where her movement isn't consistent either. You're gonna have to know which uh, one of your hops you're on. Yeah, if you get caught in the turnaround, that animation yeah. is not gonna be your friend, my friend. Oh, no, it's definitely not. Looking for one more tournament uh, turn in. It's kind of heartbreaking to be at 49 out of 55. So close. Rick's holding 32. He cannot die. Jungle's going to eat this pulse bomb. The bunker comes up. This pulse does almost nothing for Gen G here. The bunker will fade away, but nice trade up for Ballistics in terms of heroics. The bunker going to come up at 50. It used to come up much faster, but the pulse bomb's going to take a bit of time to build. It's still pretty fast, uh, all things considered. Oh, so. yeah. We'll see if Kyocha go in. Looking for an Entomb probably over the wall. I thought he was going to initiate Engage, but you know, he and Tiss are doing a great job up in the front. Reset chunked a little Here it bit is. before this fight even starts, but Reset after, actually after the back is very, very vulnerable. But Tiss going in, SDE is going to get blown up. No surviving seemingly forever, but now maybe Ballistics can find a pick of their own. SC, SC from behind, but he misses the scatter. That's not the scatter he ah, wanted. It looks like yeah. he wanted to deny a turn in, but there was no one on it. He could see all five of them. It's so a bit of a weird move. Yeah, with SC missing that arrow, I mean, just so crucial. It's going to be a double turn in. This will be Web Weavers for Genji. Yeah, they're going to get Web Weavers, and they have the kill onto Lunara once again. So this is another Web Weaver push that could do a ton of damage as we trade back, but because Gen G, despite being down two entire ports, has still a level lead, not just from kills, but just from wave clear and rotations, they can do so much with this. They also were able to kill Lunara before the turn in and get wave uh, clear done for most of the waves. So the Webbers are spawning basically right on top of the ports. As you can see here, this Webber is just gonna do one wave and then this, this port's gonna be down. As you can see, Kyocha looking for potentially another grab and two is ready, he gets caught. A uh, flip on in. I, I think that There's actually almost helps Genji because that Entomb is in an okay spot. Not the greatest, actually. Jung uh, he's got 40 gems, so he drops the bunker just to make sure and guarantee he does not die. Oh, I see he was a little bit far forward there, is what River's showing us. But in the end, you're right. These boards will go down. And this will create a big XP deficit. So Genji will have another turn in worth of gems after this as well. The XP deficit is, you know, Something that, to keep in mind, it's going to push them to 16. Only a brief window where they had that before Ballistics, but they're closer to 20, and they're closer to really putting the hurt onto some keeps, for example. Rich does end up taking some damage here, but it's not that significant. They're actually looking for the catch on the jung -Ah. He's out here. He doesn't have Bunker for 20. Not able to find him. Ooh. But I think they just want to wave clear so hard that they can get another turn in. Look, they're still holding 94. Oh, Kyocha. Wow, that's a lot of damage. And SDE just sees any opportunity put out as much damage as he can. Rich doing so much to block these arrows. Like, as a Hanzo player himself, he understands that if he stands in such a way, he's gonna end up 
you know, eating those scatter arrows, then he can, of course, just be healed. Um, and healing him is pretty easy as long as he doesn't die to a burst like that. He doesn't have a lot of health. And Tracer's got pretty high base regen anyways. So he's just blocking these shots because he can because he has blink. And he's like, oh, I could just blink into the spot, absorb this arrow, and then move on with my life. Ballistics, though, with that trade up on the chase, does get the turn in. But as you can see from the waves on the lanes, like their webbies are gonna almost be posturing defensively here against the onslaught of Jinji. Good old defensive web weaver, my uh, go-to strat. Not really. So for Jinji, you know they do get a second turn in in a row. It's gonna be huge. Mo or okay, I, their I, second I, turn is prevented. Yeah, their second turn is prevented in a row. Ballistics, though, have this moment. And actually, they might actually catch Tiss out here. Jungha jumping in. Arrows big arrow from Sun. No way. Reset forced into Archon. SC eats a big uh, pulse bomb, but stays alive through it all. Finally does get dropped now. And oh, I think this might go from bad to worse for Ballistics. They lose one, lose two. It's cascading down. Magi the next to fall. He will get taken out here. And I think this is going to be a wipe. Genji chasing through. They find Jungha. They will erase Hooligan. That's all all the gems down in Ballistics, they might have stopped the turn in, but they cannot stop the onslaught of Genji. Genji just totally getting a team wipe here. They're going for keep straight up. They are just going to ignore, for the most part, the web weavers that are against them. And they're going to go turn in their own. They can try to make a turn in into a boss. The respawns are just, the death timer respawns are just like low enough, I'd say, to where uh, Genji can't actually end here. So they're going to get this keep. Tastar, because he can shield while also having insane wave clear and damage potential, is going to get the top. They're holding 122. Keep goes down, actually. Uh, there's there's like almost 50 gems on, uh, on someone, if I saw that correctly. Certainly 40s and 30s oh, yeah. out there. So for Ballistics, I mean, they are just loaded. And yeah, okay, uh, maybe a little bit overkill on the turn in. But. So it's unfortunate, though, that they not only didn't save their top keep, but failed to get the bottom keep. So a little bit of misunderstanding by Genji as to where their damage is at and like what they what the tools they were, they had to defend but were. They're still close to 20. They're still ahead, I think, in the grand scheme of things ever so slightly because of that 20. Um, but they are behind in structures. I mean, those now, are the, oh, go ahead. Those are the little, little things that you say when you're, you're thinking, is there a way that Ballistics can come back? Well, sure, I mean, having a keep advantage, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, that certainly is. And Genji's gonna need to make something happen with this 20. And worst case, they need to get a keep. And top keep in particular would be the best option, the best bet for them. Um, they can get a second web return in after this. I know that sounds ridiculous. It actually would be the third in a row for them in a short period of time. Oh, uh, they're looking for Rich here. He is the one who actually gets this Look time. His teammates shield. block him. That's like almost an entire health bar full of shield. Uh, the second health bar. It's right the in. storm shield, man. He's got one, and it persists. Rich is just incredibly tanky. It's not a sense of fail off for Tracer. And he's uh, kind of using it to bully SC back almost. They will rotate bottom, take out this keep, maybe look for a second one, but as their time expired here, they put down some damage onto Hooligan. Bunker protects the core here for now, but can Ballistics ever exhume Gen G from their base? Well, I mean, I don't know if they will. They don't have 20. Thornwood Vi just trying to help shove everybody out. Gen G's gonna give the respect here. They're gonna leave because they can't just go for another turn in. And Ballistics can't deny them from that turn in without 20. They don't have 20. They're gonna have to take a bad fight. If they do contest, Ooh. if they don't contest, these web weavers are gonna go straight to the core. They're gonna go straight to the keeps again. It's gonna relieve the top pressure, which is the only thing that really Genji has left to worry about. So well, we're gonna shut that down. But I mean, at least partially. It's actually kind of crazy how much catapults do to mitigate web weaver pushes. But the second keep is almost certainly going down, and this could be a push to end. I think there's barely going to be enough time for Ballistics to get 20 before that core gets hit. So that's something they've got going for them as well. Right, they pick up a big wave, so 20 is near, and that is almost the bare minimum that Ballistics would need to hang on and even try to pick a fight to keep themselves in this game. Certainly coming down to the end, but if Ballistics find a fight, they can absolutely shove down top straight to the core. If there's it's, it's almost Jungha. hope against hope at this point. And Jungha is very far forward. Jeff pulls it back. Not in He's caught. Engaged. He's silenced. Big blow up there. It's a 
huge play by Tracer. One more to follow as Jung Ah drops. And with Hooligan going to be the next to fall, this is going to be the nail in the coffin for Gen G as they pressure into the core. Look for some extra stat padding there as uh, they make sure that SCSC pays. But the core will fall, and this will be a 2 1 lead hammered home by Gen G. And once again, Ballistics brings a draft that on paper isn't bad. But is it as good as it could have been? Is it a draft 